Hi everyone, welcome to another video on B2 Programming channel. Uh, today we are going to talk about data par partitioning technique for distributed queries. Welcome to a journey into the heart of distributed query processing. Uh, and why I say that is because there are many, you know, our data partitioning techniques. We will be uncovering the strategies that allow distributed systems to efficiently process vast amounts of data. Uh, and in this video, in this uh, video lecture, I'm going to talk about two main techniques, horizontal and vertical partitioning. And in the coming videos, I'll see how many parts I have to make. So this will be part one. And in the coming videos, I'll talk about range and hashing also and hybrid uh, partitioning as well, because there are many partitioning methods, right? And uh, try to understand that data partitioning is a critical component of distributed computing. Because uh, what data partitioning is, so let me give you uh, an idea. Uh, it involves dividing large data sets into smaller manageable po portions that can be processed in parallel across multiple nodes. So if we have a big uh, table, right, and big uh, data set, sometimes it can be hard, it can be difficult to process it, right? So uh, data partitioning allows us to divide this large data set into smaller sets. And then these sets can be accessed whenever needed. These sets can be processed parallelly on different nodes. Because in distributed system, we will have different nodes, right? So that's the benefit of uh, partitioning. Uh, two types of partitioning we are going to talk about in this video lecture are horizontal and vertical partitioning. Uh, so first, let's talk about horizontal partitioning. In horizontal partitioning, so first of all, it's also called sharding. Uh, so in this type of partitioning, data is divided based on rows, right? So if you look at a table, uh, these are the rows, right? So this is one row, this is second row, right? So these are the rows and these are the columns, right? So horizontal ones are the rows and the vertical ones are the columns. So obviously, if we are talking about horizontal partitioning, we will be dividing uh, based on rows, right? And in distributed system, since we have multiple nodes, every node will hold a different subset of rows in horizontal partitioning, okay? And this technique is mostly used when data set is too large to fit on a single node's storage, or it is also used when certain rows are accessed more frequently than others. Okay, so this is very simple illustration of horizontal partitioning. Suppose we have a table, uh, name of the table is student details, and it has these uh, columns, name, roll number, class, location, subject. If I have to perform horizontal partitioning on this table, uh, it would mean that I'm gonna pick a few rows and I'm gonna save them on one node, and that creates first partition. Then I'm going to pick other nodes, other rows uh, from this table, and I'm going to save them on a different node. So that becomes a second partition, right? Column names will remain the same. But yes, we I'm saving data uh, row-wise on different nodes. Again, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a very simple part, a very simple illustration, OK? Now, let me help you understand the whole idea of horizontal partitioning. Suppose you have an employee database, right? And it stores information about employees in, a, in an organization. Now in the database, there will be different tables. And one of the tables in this database is employee data, right? So this is one of the tables, right? Uh, column names are employee ID, name, department, salary, and hire date. So when all the when those employees were hired, right? Now in horizontal partitioning, you will split the data rows of a table into separate partitions based on certain criteria, right? So for this example, let's say you decide to horizontally partition the employee data table based on departments, right? So each partition will hold data for a specific department. Now, how would that be? So first of all, how many departments are there? Five departments, right? sales, marketing, finance, HR, and engineering. What, what we can do is, uh, because we want to partition it uh, horizontally, row based on rows, 
so the horizontal partitioning setup would be somewhat like this so first partition will have department sales second partition will have department marketing third finance fourth hr and fifth engineering so we will have five partitions right and these partitions will be stored on different nodes so for the sake of this example i have taken only two partitions one and fourth uh, so these uh, partition one is stored on a different node partition four is stored on a different node right when a new employee is hired the horizontal partitioning mechanism will place the employee's record in the appropriate partition based on their department so uh, if a new employee is hired it's not necessary to you know uh, go through this entire table this entire data in employee data table instead we can just see like what is the department of this employee right and then access that partition on that specific node right so for example an employee in the sales department will go into partition 1 employee in marketing department partition 2 and so on right and and when querying for employee data so if let's say i want to get information about an employee i will first check what is the department of that employee and then i can just access that partition instead of you know accessing the whole data a whole table in that database right so that way database system will target the relevant partition based on you know specified department so what what it does is it improves query performance right for example if you want to retrieve information about all employees in the sales department you don't have to access employee data table you can just access first partition right you just need to scan first partition right i mean not literally you need to scan the database needs to scan first partition so horizontal partitioning is specifically useful when different subsets of data are frequently accessed together or they have you know different access patterns and it also allows for you know efficient data retrieval uh, it enhances the performance by reducing uh, the amount of data that needs to be scanned or processed for every query okay now let's talk about uh, vertical partitioning uh, so vertical partitioning like in um, horizontal partitioning we talked about rows in vertical partitioning we talk about columns right so these are the columns as you know and uh, so vertical partitioning in vertical partitioning we split data based on columns uh, so different nodes in distributed system will uh, hold different sets of columns for each row okay and and this approach is actually used when some columns are accessed more frequently than others so it reduces the amount of data that you know needs to be read for specific queries again this is a very simple illustration vertical partitioning uh, i'm just partitioning this table so i'm saving a uh, name and role number two columns now along with the their rows i'm saving the data related to name and role number in partition 1 and the data related to class location and subject is stored in partition 2 on different nodes okay this is just a simple illustration now consider a database for an e-commerce platform right so e-commerce database will have different tables suppose there is one table named product data okay and this table stores information about you know products product id name of the product its description price uh, details about the manufacturer and all that now in vertical partitioning you split the columns of a table into separate partitions based on the characteristics of the data again we will use certain criteria right so suppose you decide to vertically partition the product table into two partitions one partition relates to product information and another partition relates to manufacturer information right so the first partition uh, again whenever we are storing data in the form of partitions you don't have to say partition 1 and 4 or something you will give specific name to those tables because ultimately you are you know making sub tables so in this case uh uh partition 1 we will create two partitions so partition 1 will have product information so let's say name of the table is product information and the second table partition 2 on a separate node will be manufacturer information right in first part partition you can put the columns product id name product description product price and in the second column uh, second table sorry 
you can put uh, information related to manufacturer. So manufacturer name, his, I, his or her ID, or their ID, or their address, and their contact information, right? Now, when querying for product data, the database system can choose to access only the relevant partitions based on the required information. For example, if a user wants to search for products based on their names and descriptions, query can be directed to partition one. It doesn't have to scan the whole product data table. It can just go to partition one, which contains the general pr product information. If a user wants to view the manufacturer details for a specific product, the query can be directed to partition two, which contains, you know, manufacturer information and same goes for uh, filling in the details, right? So whenever there is a, there is a need for, uh, there is need to update the database related to certain, you know, column, maybe you want to update manufacturer name or something, you don't have to tamper with product data table. You can just go to that specific partition, right? So by vertically partitioning the data, the distributed query system can actually optimize data retrieval by only accessing the necessary columns for each query. Uh, it also reduces the amount of data that needs to be transferred and processed. And ultimately, it leads to you know, improved query performance and uh, more efficient resource utilization in a distributed environment. So vertical partitioning is especially beneficial when you know different columns have different access patterns or they are accessed by different types of queries. Uh, it allows for more focused and efficient data retrieval, which you know contributes to overall query optimization in a distributed uh, system. So this is the explanation of uh, data partitioning techniques. Uh, two techniques we did in this uh, video lecture, horizontal partitioning and vertical partitioning. In the coming episode, uh, coming video lecture, we'll talk about range, hash, and list partitioning. We will also talk about, you know, hash, uh, not hash, uh, hybrid partitioning and optimization criteria, okay? Uh, if you have any doubt, feel free to ask them in the comments or you can always, you know, send an email. I will see you in the next video lecture. Till then, take care.